Hi, I'm Catherine Costa and True North Arts, host of the Oasis. I love shelves ever since I was a kid. I would love picking them up and putting them to my ear. And even now as an adult, there's something about that sound. It's like the sound of the wind, right? And when we listen, when we slow down in our busy lives and we take the time to listen, it may be listening in a meditation, maybe listening while we're working in our journals, writing in our journals, or when we're going for a walk or working in a garden. Wisdom. There's a lot of wisdom to be had when we slow down. Can you hear me? Spirit. Can you hear spirit? Can you hear your soul? Can you hear what your heart has to say? Today's video is about listening and also creating sacred spaces of which to collect the treasures from the sea and glean the wisdom that we find there. Stay tuned for a look at my altars, some of my favorite treasures from the sea. We'll take a look inside my Oasis journal and I'll share a recent story, a synchronistic, beautiful story, a shocking story mm, that happened at the Oasis a couple of weeks ago. Stay tuned for all this and more. So let's start with that shocking story that happened over at the Oasis. Now, if you're new here, the Oasis is my weekly online retreat it happens on Fridays and it's a time and a place and a space for us to listen for each one of us to quiet that noise outside of us and to tune in and listen to that inner wisdom. It's a great way of nurturing a spiritual practice. And at the Oasis, I lead these soul journey guided meditations. We work with divination tools. These help us for different in different ways of tuning in and listening at that wisdom. Now, one of the participants was sharing after the meditation and after the cards that she received, and she was telling us the story about how she had made a huge change in her life. It was a real big turning point. She finally was able to move to her paradise, her favorite place out in California by the ocean. And it was the first time in eons that she would have her own place, a place of her own. And she finally gets there and it took a lot of bravery to get there, a lot of determination, a lot of like knowing what she wanted. And it was just a great celebration when it happened. But the time that she moved in was just before COVID struck, before the pandemic arrived. And so you can imagine, here she is finally, finally living at the ocean and she's being told to shelter at home. Like all of us, we've been asked to come back and stay in our homes so that we could be safe. <laughs> and she's just like, what? You're like, like you're so close to having this dream and it wasn't quite, quite there, right? Not quite realized. In my experience, in my personal experience, there've been times in my life that I've been very shy it's probably hard to imagine here I am talking in front of a camera and if you've seen me teach and you see me leading events you're like you're not shy at all well I was painfully shy at one point in my life and there are moments even now that I since spend so much time alone that I end up feeling very uncomfortable stepping out into the world I get kind of all curled up and all like too comfortable and she was expressing her own reticence her own feelings of in a sense, a shyness, uh, an uncomfortableness of stepping out. And the day before she did venture out and, and got something to eat at one of the food carts over the ocean crossing the street, you know, and it was a real success. That small step helped her to feel good about it. And so I was about to acknowledge her bravery in, in venturing out when all of a sudden, out of the blue, this beautiful book, with a mermaid on it, comes crashing down 
from a shelf that's up above here. Here's my computer. I've got a couple shelves. Nothing triggered this fall. It wasn't like somebody slammed a door or I'm just sitting here listening, talking to somebody. And all of a sudden this comes whoosh, flying down. And with it, it takes down this Nautilus shell and the bottom part of it breaks off. You can see I had this beautiful piece along the bottom and it breaks off. And I didn't get hurt. <laughs> it just came flying down right next to me, like right here. And it started and here I am facilitating an Oasis event. And we're all like, and all eyes are on me. And it interrupted me in what I was saying. And, and of course my adrenaline was rushing. And then all of a sudden, I kind of pulled my wits together and I'm looking at her. And what came to mind, the wisdom that was channeling through me, I feel like spirit wanted her to know. This mermaid wanted her to know that it was time, it was time for her to come out of her shell and to break this pattern. It's breaking a pattern. Am I upset? This this knowledge shell is actually pretty special for me. It was given to me many, many years ago, and I used to have a web business when I lived in Colorado. This was about 18, 20 years ago, I don't know, and it was an architect, and he, he was in a great place in his life because he, at this point, was just designing things that enchanted him because he had just established himself, and, and, um, and he collected these Nautilus shells. And they were all over his office. And we got together to talk to him about building a site that was reflective of his current dream projects. And, and uh, I really could get his essence of what he wanted. And I was just admiring these Nautilus shells. And so he gave me this one. Am I upset that it broke? Actually not, because I think I was always like, ooh, ooh, so delicate. Ah, something else happened with this shell. By the way, before I dive into this and what um, the beautiful thing that has come out of this for that person who shared when I had that startling thing, she saw this and then heard my words and I said, this is what wants to come out. Maybe it's time for you to come out of your shell, really spoke to her. And that's one of those magical moments that happens. It's you can't predict it. And we the Oasis. The time in the Oasis is always filled with that. Whether you're coming and joining us live in one of the three optional sessions throughout the day, or you're watching the recording and creating a personal retreat for yourself, hands down, people are always saying what the messages that they're getting in the meditations, working with the divination tools, what the future topic is and some takeaway, some message from it really speaks to them, really helps to give a perspective. And when we shift perspectives or make that time to listen, it's really helpful. All right. So I've had so many things break in my life and that I kind of used to it. And I, I've even had some pretty precious things and this is pretty precious, but it wasn't all like shattered and no one got hurt. But now I've got a dish and I want to show you a look at my altar and how this has become a place for me to collect treasures. So if you look over my shoulder here, you'll see one of the altars I'm going to show you today. Now, what I love about the location of that one is I see it every time I come in and out of the room and it also shows up here in my videos. My altar spaces are a place for me to honor different things. I change it up all the time. So I have a lot of treasures, a lot of sacred objects that I absolutely love. And so I have a couple different spots around that um, where I get to place those, but I don't, it's still not enough room for all of the things that I have. Typically once a week, I take a look at and I dust things off. About monthly, I do a bigger change with it, if not more frequently. The objects that we see here relate to cancer. We're in the sun sign of cancer right now and it's a new moon in cancer on Friday. The zodiac sign of cancer is typically seen as a crab. This astrological archetype governs all animals, all creatures that have a shell. I have hanging up right there above my altar space 
a square frame is perfect for tucking in mandala art. The mandala that you see here is my summer solstice manifesting mandala. What's a manifesting mandala? Well, it's a mandala designed with intentions for a period of time. And in this particular case, it's the summer, the three months of that summer season. So as I was coloring it in and as I was adding additional details and drawings and markings and maybe little words, I am infusing it with the energy of my intentions, hanging it up. That provides me with not only a visual of which I can see, and it's a reminder, it's that touchstone, it's that way of staying connected with that which I desire, but it also energetically keeps those intentions alive and vibrant. This is an example of the artwork that participants get when they attend an Oasis session. I de design these beautiful handouts and often include something that has an interactive activity with it. And I love how it looks like the starfish is giving a high five <laughs> to the Buddha. How cute is that? I love little whimsical, playful touches to things. Sometimes with spirituality, we can get all heady or serious, but I like to bring an element of beauty and playfulness. This oyster shell becomes a pedestal for a beautiful blue piece of sea glass. These large shells look like angel wings, and when you turn them over, they also create a wonderful container for showcasing your beautiful crystals. Now, as you can imagine, when I saw these shells at the shop, I just had to pick them up. I've had these for a number of years. So unique, this red color and the sweet little details and patterns with them. Yeah, that's why they're called strawberry top seashells. I love the mother of pearl finish in these two. And did you know that there were so many different starfish? Doesn't it look like these starfish are having a dance party? What's that? Oh my goodness, look who's here. We have not seen you, giant clam, in a long time. Oh, why are you so skinny and silly? Ah, the clam is so happy to see some of its friends, the shells, getting featured here. Now, why are you talking? Why are you talking to everybody? Why are you only talking to me? Huh? What's going on here? Oh, the clam is feeling shy and nervous. It doesn't feel comfortable. No. Do you ever feel that way where you just get all clammed up and you just don't feel comfortable sharing? I can tell that sometimes happens to people when they come to the Oasis. And you know, when, when you come to the Oasis, you don't even have to have your camera on. You can come incognito and watch and observe. And then if you do feel comfortable after you see when other people are talking and all that, and you realize that everyone there is really nice and they want to hear from you, only if you feel like it, you can turn on your camera and chit chat with us at the end of the program. But you can experience the whole presentation camera off. And in fact, if you're just kind of feeling tired and you're in your pajamas and you just don't feel like being visible, you can totally turn off your camera and it's all good. It's all, all safe, right? Yeah, but why aren't you safe here? I mean, these the people who come to my videos, they're friends. They, they, they actually, they haven't been leaving any comments, but they're not leaving any negative ones. Mm. Oh, maybe if people start leaving comments and letting us know how much they they like the clam and they like Catherine, they like like me, okay, and like the programming, you know, will continue to show up and maybe you'll actually show up in a bigger way and you'll do you, all right, well, maybe people don't know what to say, what to write in a comment, you know? Let's give them a question. Huh? What would be a good question? Oh, you've got one here written for me. What does it say? Ooh, what are your sun and moon signs? Ooh, that's a great question. That's a great way that we can get to know you and you can get to know us because I'll post in the description below what our sun and moon signs are. So that way I'll encourage you to scroll down, take a look at that description. Also in that description, you're gonna find, you know that beautiful Oracle card that I showed you at the very beginning? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put links to how you can find that and who that artist is. And any time I make references to things and like the music and all that, 
I always share it in the description. I always like to let people know about good things and how they can learn more about it. But yeah, we want to know what your sun and moon sign is. If you don't know what it is in the description, I'll um, post a link on how you can get a free astrological chart so you can find out what that is. All right, well, maybe next week, because next week we're going to be hanging out with Neptune. Ooh, you know Neptune. Yeah, Neptune can scare us. Yeah, yeah. But Neptune really loved Hestia. So if he loved Hestia, he can't be all bad. He can't be all scary. So we're going to be hanging out with Neptune next week. But this week it's all about cancer and it's all about shells and maybe coming out of our shell. And the Oasis, I think tomorrow is going to help a lot of people with feeling, oh, at home, uh, knowing what it's like when we're spending too much time at home and we need to get out of our shells. There's also a lot of other wisdom. But before we go, I want to show you a couple more things. I'm going to show you this other altar space that I have as well as inside my Oasis journal. This altar is located just to the right of my workstation. And I'll be in the middle of working. I'll take a moment, a little break, a breather, and I'll look over and gaze upon it and find inspiration. I have my grandmother and she's in a beautiful mother of pearl frame. So perfect for this season. And then the card is from Colette Baron reads The Good Tarot and Patience. And Patience was a virtue my grandmother had lots of. And so she reminds me and, and anytime I'm feeling uncertainty and I'm feeling nervous, I'm like, oh, am I going to succeed in what I'm doing? Things aren't happening as fast as I'd hoped. I get some encouragement with that. You also see in the background, you can see my Mesa. That's my um, medicine bundle. And behind that is a totem animal. That totem animal is the snow leopard. Snow leopards are one of the world's most elusive cats. Nicknamed Ghosts of the Mountains, they live in the world's highest ranges and are one of the least understood felines. <laughs> I think those of you who know me well can understand why the snow leopard is one of my totem animals. I am a feline. I am a cat. My sun sign is Leo. And uh, the kind of large cat that I am is... A snow leopard. You see, I am independent. I live a very solitary life. I am married, but my work is very solitary. You know, at least lately, I've been tuning into people who I really admire, who are really rocking it on social media. And I really admire and want to do be where they're at, right? It's always good to see people who are successful and kind of deconstruct and analyze what is it that, you know, makes up their success. And one thing I've come privy of is the size of their teams and the kind of budget they work with. And me, I am a one woman show. So these videos that you see, I do all the editing, I do all the work on them. When you come to one of my Oasis events and you get the handouts, I do the graphic design for that. I do all the graphics for promoting it. I, I'm kind of like this one-stop shop. I have a sweet skill set. And, uh, and so um, I wear many hats and I'm trying to do what usually a bigger team does. Um, and, and so when I feel like, ah, oh, it's a lot of work, I gotta give myself some credit. Well, it's the snow leopard here. She is there in the corner and she is just showing me that, you know what, she's part of my team. She just, just, uh, that's the spirit within me. And uh, I, I'm, right now just going with it and eventually we'll see what other animal allies come in and be a part of my dream team until then let's take a look inside my journal now my oasis journal is one of my very happy places my favorite places to hang out and i was inspired by hestia she's that greek goddess and we took a look at Hestia last week at the Oasis. And I decided to create a sacred spot in my journal. You can see that here. The central image comes from a magazine called Happiness with a Z. I'll put information about that in the comment section below. A lot of people ask me, where do I get such beautiful, interesting images? And that is one beautiful magazine I highly recommend. 
So this page is made up of a lot of beautiful papers that I've layered. And one in particular that I'd like to point out is that gray one. It's a marbling. I've had this piece of paper, ooh, 10 years or, or more, and it came from a blog, blogging buddy. So back in the day when we started blogging, there was a whole group of us who were blogging and we would regularly visit each other's blogs and leave comments and we got to know each other and sent each other gifts in the mail. And this came from a blogger. Her name is Inga and she lives in Belgium and she was taking classes on marbling. She also does beautiful work with making little books. And I have held on to this piece of paper to wait for the right moment. And this was the right moment because it adds just that element perfectly layered in with to create the sacred space. And the words here, slow living, really encapsulates not only the theme that we're talking about right now, right, with the listening and all that, but oh, this is a carryover from what we've been exploring at the Oasis and what the Oasis provides. So in between Oasis sessions where we're not in meditation, I now can open up my journal and I've got a place to rest my eyes on and really get reminded to slow down and even just to listen, listen. On the facing page, you see a snail. Again, this is an animal with a shell on its back. It's carrying its home around with us and the snail of course, teaches us how to slow down. My friend Liza gave me this acronym this week, which I absolutely found insightful. It really spoke to me. The word safe means slowing allows fast evolution. Now, how that reflects an important message for me is that when I'm not feeling safe, when I'm feeling worried about finances and cash flow and all that, you know what I tend to do? I tend to the little mouse who gets into all the little details, climbs onto that little wheel and starts running on the wheel and working faster and working harder and, whee, and the energy and the anxiousness. Whoo, 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 am I enough? Can I do enough? Because I need, I don't know if I have enough. I don't know if I have enough. All right. So I have really changed a pattern since December because I got so exhausted and I really took a break. Even though I was showing up, but it was, I was really thinking of quitting and everything, but I got off that hamster wheel and I even thought about that because Mouse, the spirit of Mouse showed up for me and, and I was like, mm, I'm gonna change this. And when I feel like I'm not safe, it is safe for me to slow down. In fact, it's safe for me to go even slower. So this week I have been practicing that after I learned this, I thought, all right, before I share this in this video, practice what you're going to preach, right? And I did. Yesterday, I went slow. I went really slow. And I it was amazed by noon how much I got done. And I was more relaxed and feeling grounded and feeling positive and hopeful and peaceful. And, and I was like, wow, this feels great. So this journal page with this snail is here to remind me that it is safe to go slowly. And in fact, when we do slow down, it's amazing the insights that can come up. We're more able to not only glean insights, but also integrate the learnings. If we're always going, 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 learning and consuming and not making time to hmm, slow down and integrate. Got to be careful of that. That's also another thing that happens on the Oasis. So you come and join me for two hours. It gives you a chance to really slow down and integrate and just give yourself that gift. So I do hope that you're inspired to join me at the Oasis tomorrow. That's Friday. If not tomorrow, there's always next Friday, but you don't want to miss them because let me tell you, even though they're one-offs and you can come in a regular spiritual practice of listening and slowing down and having that accountability and having someone like me say, Hey, here, let me guide you. You show up and I'm going to treat you to delighting your mind first with a little presentation and then slowing down into a meditation. Then we'll uh, tap into the magic of pulling Oracle cards and looking at messages and then the wisdom circle.
where you have the option, if you so feel brave and comfortable, really it's about being comfortable, and you feel like you've got something to share, your insights and your inspirations, I love hearing that. I am Catherine Costa. Thank you for joining me. If you are inspired by these and you want to keep following my weekly videos and you don't want to miss any, I highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button and then click the bell. The bell will give you an email notification when each video is ready so you don't miss them. And I do. I'll be going to be looking to see if you leave me a comment. I would love it. And you know who else would love it? Ooh, you get to see him. <laughs> you didn't want that, did you? Oh, sometimes that happened. Happy accidents. All right, you take care. Thank you for being here. Namaste. Much love to you. I see the light in you and I honor you. Thank you for being here with me. It means the world to me.